Okie dokie, let's continue this. Hello guys. So we are going to be talking about live load reduction. We have been discussing this for some time now. And specifically when when we talk about the different type of loads and we went to live loads and I say, you know something? Live loads are uh, really big. They are, I would say, a lot of times overestimated. It's such that so overestimated that even the the specification allows you to reduce the live load uh, under special circumstances. For example, look at this uh, plan view here, and these are offices also. And if you look at the specification, what it says about lobbies, look at that, 100, and offices 50 pounds per square foot. That's a lot. Do you imagine that being even possible there, everywhere? that load acting everywhere and anywhere i don't think so so because of that as i was saying the ase 7 building code or specification allows allows for a reduction in the design live load now under certain circumstances what are those circumstances the influence area has to be larger than 400 square feet and by influence area uh, I mean it's a tributary area that we learn how to calculate hopefully we learn how to calculate in the previous video multiply by this factor and that factor just depends on ta what type of element we are studying that's basically what it is so these are the formulas that the specification allows you to do uh, in US units or in SI units so if you're here in US units the reduced live load is going to be the original live load prescribed by the specification multiply by this reduction factor. This reduction factor is 0.25 plus 15 divided by the square root of KLL times AT. KLL divided by, uh, multiplied by AT is just the influence area that is reflected here in this part. Now, uh, there are certain things also that it says that the reduced live load has to be uh, not smaller than 50% of the original load for single floor members and not smaller than 40 percent that means that if i calculate my reduced live load and i get a uh, 0.3 i'm not going to use 0.3 i'm going to use 0.5 here or 0.4 here depending on what type of member is a multi-story member multi-floor member or single floor members well these multi-story members we are referring to columns obviously and uh, if you are studying several uh, stories for that column but in a slab, you, or in a girder, you're not going to have multi-story members for that. Now, the KLL, which is the element light load factor, as I was telling you, depends on the type of element and the location of that element. For interior columns, for exterior columns without cantilever slabs, edge columns, corner columns, edge beams, interior beams, and all other beams. When I say beams, uh, we're referring to girders also, of course. Now, no reduction is allowed is the original load is bigger or equal than 100, I say it's greater, but let's put it equal also, pounds per square foot. Um, for garages of roofs in one structure or for buildings used for public assembly. We don't want to play with that. That's what the specification says, basically. Public assembly forget it because we don't know how the masses are going to react, the masses of people are going to react in those buildings. Um, for ordinary roofs, and we're going to see what those are, the reduction factor or the live load for roofs is uh, obtained by multiplying these two factors, R1 and R2, that I'm going to define right away. So for ordinary roofs, R1 is calculated like this and R2 is calculated like that. Now, what is this? The tributary area, well, we know what the tributary area is. So if the tributary area is smaller than 200, that factor is one. If it's bigger than 600, that factor is one also. And if it's in between these, then we're gonna have, uh, if it's in between 200 and 600, then we're gonna have to calculate the value based on the tributary area, and that will be the value that we put here. Now for R2, if F is smaller than four or 0.5 is 0.6 is f is bigger than 12 
and if you are between these two then by the way this is not f that shouldn't be f that should be tributary area there there's an error there f is the number of inches of rise per foot it's kind of a slope but it's not the slope inches of rise per foot of roof uh, yeah it's f it's f here I thought it was tributary area. That was an error. No, but it's 0. 0.5. Okay, that's why. It's 0. 0.5. Yes. Okay. Rise to span ratio. This is copy from the specification. Okay. And just putting it here, so you know that you can go and you can find it somewhere, and the specification will be there. I think this is, uh, yeah, this is uh, old, but I think it's still the same for the ASC. ASCE 716. I think it's the same one still. Okay, let's do this example to consolidate what we said. For the three story building, calculate the design life support by one floor uh, first. Number one, floor beam, one prime. What is that? This beam here, one prime. Second, girder B. Where is the girder B? B, B, B. Option B, girder B. Here, girder B. And three, the interior column, B2, B2 at the first story. That's already telling you multi-story, right? Because if you are at the first story, you're taking the second and the third story load also from that. S assume the same life load of four of floors, including the roofs. And this is uh, office building. <sighs> what I don't like about this problem, honestly, and I didn't want to change it, is that this is not real because you don't include you don't use the same load for everything but you know that you can go to the specification and read the use for every one of the the levels that you're working with definitely if the roof uh, you're not going to put an office in the roof so why it should be the same but it's okay it's an academ academic problem just to show you how to do it so let's keep doing it okay First, occupancy. What is occupancy? Office buildings. Office buildings here, 50. 50 pounds per square foot. So that's going to be our original life load, or L0. Or not. First one, uh, the floor being one prime. We have to use tributary area. The things that we learned before, this is 8, this is 20 meaning it's more than two times that means that the tributary area is going to be this one for this part of the girder and this one for this part of the girder so how much is the tributary area for every span for every span that will be 20 times 8 20 times 8 160 pounds per square foot now what type of element is this we look in the table and find the KLL that type of element is the no 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 yes interior beams so it's an interior beam or girder or slab or, or joist it's an interior beam so we have to multiply this by two but i see we have 320 and 320 is smaller than 400 and the specification talks about when the influence area is smaller than 400 no life reduction is allowed now, then we have to do this. We have to calculate this this uh, floor beam. The way this is set up, the way this is set up like that means that this is resting on top of that and this is resting on top of that. That means simple support between this point and this point and the tributary area is eight. So you're gonna have eight multiplied by our 50, which is the load, and you're going to have 400 pounds per foot or 0.4 kip per foot. The beam that we have to calculate or the structure that we have to calculate, lights will be will be this. 0.4 kip or 400 pounds supported here and supported here, supported here and supported here, 20. And every reaction will be a 400 times 20 divided by 2, 4 and 4. Keep. 4,000 pounds. 
Tom, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Okay, solution for girder B. Girder B will be this girder. Now, look what happened with the girder. If you look at that, the girder is just receiving this floor beam and this floor beam. So that means that this one here is, let's say, unloading everything on top of the columns directly. So I only have to cons uh, care about this one and this one, meaning the influence area is going to be this influence area that we are showing here. Half of the distance, half of the distance, half of the distance, and half of the distance. That's it. Now, if you just remember, and I hope that you remember, even if you have short-term memory issues, we just calculated this girder for this floor beam. And this floor beam is exactly identical. Exactly identical. <laughs> That's not the re if that is not the redundancy, I don't know what it is. It's identical to this one. So when you when you look at the the girder, that girder is receiving this floor beam and this floor beam. And we calculated that reaction as four. But you have four here and you have four from this other end. The reaction from this one and the reaction from this one. Meaning that reaction at that point is gonna be eight and it's gonna be eight over there. But that doesn't tell me anything about the reduction yet because we haven't talked about it. I have the tributary area here. Now I have to see if I somehow I can reduce these reactions on top of that floor beam. Okay, let's do that. What is the what is the area here? 16 times 20. So 16 times 20 is 320. What type of element is this? Once again, that type of element is an interior beam and KLL is 2 times 320 is 600. 640 is bigger than 400, meaning we can do a reduction of those reactions on top of that girder. How do we do that? We apply our equation for SA US system, which is this one here. And when we do that, we have 50. 50 is the load for offices. And the influence area, we just calculated as 640, meaning our new load is going to be 42.1 pounds per square foot. And my original load was 50. That means that these reactions that I calculated as 8, ah, OK, once again. You have to do a verification. And I didn't do it because obviously it's not. But just for you to follow a step-by-step -step procedure, now you have to verify if that reduction that we calculated or that factor, that reduction is smaller uh, or bigger than 50% of the original load. The original load was 50. The new load is 42. 50% of the original load will be 25. So obviously we can use and we should use 42 and it's okay. We're gonna use this 42.15. Now, once you have this, that's what I was telling you. Originally we calculated these two reactions as eight. That's what we said. But those reactions at eight was, were calculated based on this load. But the specification allowed me to reduce to this one. So if we are in the linear elastic realm, which we are, so basically what we have to do is multiply that those forces of A keep by that factor, this divided by that, and we will get the original loading condition for the girder B. Anything else missing? Yes, the self-weight of the girder B should be placed as a rectangular distributed load there. <coughs> OK, what else? Solution, column B2, first story. Okay, we have a problem here, Houston. Well, not a problem, actually. It's a situation that we have to understand. We have to calculate the load of the column here at this point. But then we have this load, which is a roof load, and the roof load is treated differently than the rest of the other floors. So how is the column supporting the roof treated? The tributary area is going to be half, 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 half in every direction. So meaning this distance is going to be 8, and this distance is 4, 8 and 4, 
meaning this is 24 and this is 20. For the roof, for the roof, just the top part, we are going to calculate the reduction in this way, remember? So the tributary area is 480, and this is not a multi-story uh, element, that one in particular. But on top of that, uh, we have to calculate the, the factors. Obviously, we can reduce it. So we have to calculate the two factors, R1 and R2. R1, let's see, the tributary area is 480. One thing is the tributary area, one thing is the influence area. Do not get confused. Here, you're going to plug in the tributary area, which is 480. I should multiply this by uh, the KLL corresponding to interior column, but not for calculating these values. For calculating these values, it's just tributary area. So we are in this part here, meaning we have to calculate R1. R1 is going to be 1.2 minus 0.0018, and that's 0.72. First factor calculated. The second factor, R2, is calculated on the basis of the inches that you have in rise per foot in length. But this is a floor, a flat roof. If it's a flat roof, R2 is 1. Now, our reduction will be 50 multiplied by this, multiplied by that is 36. Now we have to compare that. Uh, for that reduction, we should compare that with multi-story or, or single-story. This is single-story load, and of course, 36 is bigger than 50% of these, so it's okay, it's accepted, that one. Now, for the other two floors, the remaining two floors, first and second floor, then the tributary area is going to be two times that. And that's 960 pounds per square foot. The influence area, once again, is, is an interior column. Uh, four. So that's a lot. 4 times 960, 3,800, uh, 3,840, three bigger than 400. Apply the formula. With this formula, calculate our new load. Now, for multi-story, this is multi-story elements. This has to be 0 0.4, the minimum, multiplied by 50. 0 0.4 multiplied by 50 is 20. And this is 24, meaning 24 is acceptable for our purposes. Now, how do I calculate the total load based on tributary area for the column at the base? It's going to be the one that we calculated at the roof, the tributary area times the load, and two times the tributary area, which is this, multiplied by the load of these floors. 480 multiplied by 36, this is the one that we got for the roof, 960 times 24.6, which is this one, 40,896, or 41 kip, if you will. And that will be the way you do it. I hope that you like it. And next video, which is going to be right away, I have to do it, uh, we're going to be dealing with one full example of wind loads. Keep watching guys. Be safe.